<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog in box. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> G'day Legends, welcome back to another Extension 1 Maths lesson, starting off with a flashback to my last Extension 1 video. I've got a HSC question from a couple of decades ago, variable point 3t, 2t squared, lying on a parabola. That's a parametric representation of a parabola. Find the Cartesian equation for the parabola for two marks. As always, pause the video, have a go yourself if you want to try it. If not, um, yeah, nothing I can do. Okay, here we go through my solution. So we're going to say the x variable is equal to 3t, and we're going to rearrange this to make t the subject. We can substitute it into our y expression because we're trying to get a Cartesian equation which relates x and y. So if x is equal to 3t, if we divide both sides by 3, we get that t is equal to x over 3. Okay, now t equals x over 3, that's going to get substituted into y equals 2t squared. So here's our x coordinate, here's our y coordinate rearrange the x, chuck it into the y, and so 2t squared becomes 2 times x over 3 squared. So we get 2 times x squared over 9, and there is our Cartesian equation, okay? Relating x and y, no t's. If you got that, well done on your two marks. Okay, today we're starting a video lesson in my next topic, which is applications of calculus. This is the first lesson in this topic. Hopefully I'll make some more videos in this topic if I have time over the next few weeks. The first lesson today is on what's called related rates of change. Okay, so to access this lesson, you have to have already learned how to differentiate and find rates of change in the advanced course. Okay, first example is um, just an intro to the kind of algebra we're doing in today's examples. Once we get our heads around the algebra, we can apply it to actually solve problems and answer questions um, like exam questions. Okay. We have a relationship between a and x. a is equal to 16x minus 2x squared. We know dx on dt equals 11. So we're interpreting this as the rate of change of x. Okay, dx on dt means rate of change of x. Um, so if that's 11, evaluate the rate of change of a when x is equal to 3. Okay, so the trick here is that we're trying to find da on dt. So we're trying to find the derivative of a in terms of t. However, we have an equation relating a and x. So what we're going to have to do is chain this all together. This is called related rates of change. It's finding a derivative with a third variable involved. To do this, we're going to write dA on dt as a product of fractions. We're going to write this as dA on dx multiplied by dx on dt. So we're splitting the dA and the dt apart into two fractions, filling the gaps with dx's. The reason I know it's dx's is because x is the extra variable introduced in the information in the question. Okay, so dA on dx we can achieve by differentiating this function at the start. dx on dt has been provided to us by the question. That's just equal to 11. So we've got all the pieces we need. We're going to make x equal to 3 to get our final answer. So if a is equal to 16x minus 2x squared, that means dA on dx will be the derivative of a with respect to x. So differentiating this, we'll get 16 here and we'll get minus 4x here. So there's our dA on dx, our dx on dt is in the question, that's equal to 11. So to get dA on dt, we're doing dA on dx right here, multiplying it by our dx on dt right here, so we're doing this times 11. Here's our expression for the derivative of a, um, so the rate of change of a in terms of x. We're trying to evaluate this when x equals 3. So to find our final answer, we're going to take our derivative and we're going to substitute x equals 3. So this 4 will turn into a 12. 16 minus 12 is 4, and then 4 times 11 is 44. So 44 is our final answer for this question, okay? So this is the kind of stuff we're doing today. We're finding derivatives by splitting them apart and introducing a third variable, which is a related rate of change, relating it to the extra variable of x. Let's have a look at some questions that actually involve um, applications. Here's our first one. Volume of water in a pool given by volume equal to 2x plus 3x squared. x is the depth of the water in the pool. The pool is filled at a rate of 1.3 cubic meters per hour, so that's the rate of change of the volume. At what rate will the water level be increasing when the depth is 0.78? So first thing we have to figure out here is identify what we're being asked. We're being asked to find the rate at which the water level will be increasing. We're trying to find the rate of change of the water level, and the water level is x. So we are trying to find dx on dt, okay, the rate of change of x, when the depth is equal to 0 
Now, in the in the question, we have not been given a relationship between x and t. We've been given a relationship between x and v. So we know it's one of these questions where we are splitting apart the derivative and filling in the gaps with the related variable, which in this question is volume. So we're going to do dx on dt, splitting it apart, dx here, d, dt here, filling in the gaps with dv's. Okay, now dx on dv, we can figure out by working with our function relating v and x. Let's talk about dv on dt. dv on dt is the rate of change of the volume, which in the question it says, the pool is being filled at a rate of 1.3 cubic meters per hour. That sentence right there tells us that dv on dt is equal to 1.3, which is a pretty sick rhyme. So we're gonna say, we're gonna take our expression for v equals 2x plus 3x squared, we're going to differentiate this with respect to x. So we're doing dv on dx. The 2x turns into a 2, and the 3x squared differentiates to a 6x. Okay, slight problem here. This is dv on dx. We want to get dx on dv, so we want to turn this upside down. And we can do that. Just think of this as 2 plus 6x all over 1. Take the reciprocal, and so dx on dv, turning both sides upside down, will be equal to 1 over 2 plus 6x. So there's the first part done. Now again, we get the dv on dt, like I said, just by reading the question. Rate of change of volume is 1.3. So we say dv on dt is 1.3. Now if we multiply this with this, we're gonna be doing this, and it's gonna get our dx on dt. So dx on dt equals dx on dv, multiplied by dv on dt. Here's our expression for the derivative. So this is our rate of change of x. We're trying to find this when the depth is equal to 0.78. So we're just going to make the value of x, which is the depth. We're going to make x equal to 0.78 in our expression here to get our final answer. So here's our derivative, changing x to 0.78, putting this through a calculator, and we get a value approximately equal to 0.19. So the depth of the pool is changing at about 0.19 meters per hour. So 19 centimeters per hour. And there's our final answer. So it's all about reading the question, identify what you're trying to find, identify what you've been given to find it, and recognizing that you can split apart variables and do some differentiation. Sometimes the, um, the formulas will be given to you. Sometimes you need to know the formulas. Um, so yeah, being an extension one student means you are need to be across all your volume area, all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's try a slightly harder one with example three. We've got a candle in the shape of a cone. Looks like this. Um, its height is three times its radius. It's melting at a constant rate of 1.3 cubic centimeters per second. The proportions are staying the same, so it's staying as a, as a cone the whole time of, of the same size. Find the rate at which the radius is decreasing when the radius is 3.7. So first step, figure out what we're trying to find. Find the rate at which the radius is decreasing. So we're trying to find dr on dt when the radius is 3.7. We recognize in the question there is no relationship between r and t, so we're going to have to chain it together. What's the extra variable here? Um, well, it mentions that the cone is melting at a rate of 1.4 cubic centimeters. That's a volume. So we're going to guess that our extra variable here is the volume. Okay, if it says we're melting at a constant rate of 1.4 cubic centimeters per hour, that means our volume is changing, so our dv on dt is 1.4. But because we're melting, so we're decreasing, our rate of change is negative, okay? So an increase is positive, a decrease in change is, um, is a negative derivative. Okay, splitting apart dr and dt, we've got dr here, we've got dt here, filling in the gaps in the product with our extra um, variable, which as we've figured out is volume. Okay, so dv on dt, we've figured out by reading the question, just don't forget to make it negative. Now we need to figure out dv on dr, or dr on dv. So we need a relationship between the radius and the volume of this cone. Luckily, we passed year 10, so we know that the volume of a cone is equal to one third of the base area, pi r squared, times by the height. Now, we can turn this into a function involving only r, using the fact that the height is three times the radius. So we know that height is equal to three r. So if we take our volume formula, we change the h to be a 3r, we get 1 third pi r squared times 3r, so we end up with pi r cubed, okay? The 1 third times 3 is 1, r squared times r is r cubed. So we have v equal to pi r cubed, 
That means dv on dr, if we differentiate this, the three comes down the front, so we get three pi r, reduce the power by one, so it's squared. Okay, volume is pi r cubed, so the derivative of the volume is three pi r squared. Okay, that's the hard work done. We're just gonna put that over, oh, and also keep in mind that for our formula, for our derivative, we actually don't want dv on dr, we want dr on dv, so we're just going to take that and take the reciprocal, and so dr on dv is one over three pi r squared. Okay, that's all the pieces we need. Put that over there. We now have dr on dv right here. We have dv on dt here from reading the question. We are going to multiply these together to get dr on dt, and then we're going to evaluate it by making radius equal to 3.7. So we have one over three pi r squared times negative 1.4. That's just putting these two parts into this. Setting r equal to 3.7, feeding it through a calculator gets us a value approximately equal to negative 0.01 centimeters per second. So when the radius is 3.7, uh, the radius is changing, it's decreasing at a rate of 0.01 centimeters per second. So what's that? Like a hundredth of a centimeter per second. Um, okay, that's it for example three. Let's go on and finish off with a couple of HSC questions. We've got an easier one and a really tough one, or a tougher one at least. Okay, here's our easier band 3 one from 2019. We've got a three mark question. Distance A is inversely proportional to distance B. So A is equal to 9 over B. There's our equation relating A and B. A and B are in meters. The two, distance, the two distances vary with respect to time. Distance B is increasing at 0 0.2 meters per second what is the value of da on dt when a equals 12. Okay, we're trying to find da on dt, already told us that. We don't have a relationship between a and t, we have a relationship between a and b, so we're chaining this together with our related variable of b. So we're gonna say da on dt is da over dt, split apart, fill in the gaps with db. Okay, we can get both of these from the question, one of them is gonna need a bit of calculus. We're going to start off by saying dB on dt is 0.2. We've got that from reading. Distance B is increasing at a rate of 0.2 meters per second. So rate of change of B is 0.2. Now, using our equation relating A and B, A is equal to 9 over B. Because we're going to be doing some differentiating here, we're actually going to write that as 9 times B to the minus 1. So bringing that B up top, making the B to the 1 a B to the minus 1. Now we can differentiate this and say dA on dB, so deriving A with respect to B. Minus one comes down the front, and now the power is minus two, and so we can rewrite that as minus nine over B squared. That's our expression for the derivative of A with respect to B, which is what we need for our question. So now for our derivative, we are going to multiply um, negative nine over B squared is this part here. dB on dT is 0 0.2 right there. And um, now we've just got to figure out um, what the value of b is, so we can get an actual answer. To do that, the question says a is equal to 12. We're going to use our relationship between a and b. We are going to set a equal to 12 and then figure out what b is. So a is 9 over b. When a is equal to 12 from the question, if we rearrange this equation, we're going to multiply the b over here. We'll divide the 12 underneath. So we end up with b equal to 9 over 12. Okay, so the b and the 12 are swapping spots. b multiplies across, 12 divides underneath. So b is equal to 3 quarters. Now to finish off, we go back to the green part over here. We set b equal to 3 quarters. We square it, we put it in the fraction, and now we calculate our value equal to um, negative 3.2 meters per second. So if you paused and got negative 3.2 for yourself, you got three marks out of 70 total in the exam. So you've done really well. Okay, that's an easier question because the um, the question told us what to find, it gave us all the info, and it wasn't very ambiguous. This next one is a bit more application-y, a bit more challenging. This is a band four question from 2010. Three marks again. There's typically one of these types of questions every year or two, and they're usually always around at least three marks, sometimes four. A radio transmitter is six Ks from a straight road. So that's M right there. Closest point is S on the road car is traveling along s at a speed of 100 okay so x must be changing at a rate of 100 kilometers per hour the distance um, from s to the car is x and distance from m to the car is r using that information find an expression in terms of x for the rate of change of the radius so dr on dt where t is time in hours 
Okay, so let's dive in. As always, pause, have a go if you want to, but um, this one's pretty tough, so let's just go through our solution. So dr and dt, we don't have an equation anywhere in the question relating radius and time. So we are going to have to split this apart using our extra variable in the question, which is x. Okay, dr here, dt here, split apart, the gaps filled in with dx's. Okay, now dx on dt, can we get this from the question? dx on dt is the rate of change of x. At what rate is this distance x changing? Well, x is how far the car is from s, so the rate at which x is increasing would be the rate at which the car is moving, which the question said is equal to 100 kilometers per hour. So we're going to say dx on dt is equal to 100 because that's the speed of the car. Now to find dr and dx, we are going to form an equation relating r and x. The easiest way to do that is by looking at this and saying, hey, I have a right angle triangle here, which means I can create a Pythagorean equation by saying x squared plus 6 squared is equal to r squared. So a bit of Pythagoras here gets our equation relating r and x. We're now going to take the square root of both sides, and you can just do that by using a pair of a half, because we're going to do some calculus in a sec. So if r squared is this, r is the square root. So instead of a square root, we just write pair of a half. Now we can differentiate this because we're trying to get dr on dx. So dr on dx will be the half down the front. We're applying the chain rule here. So half comes down the front, bracket stays the same, take one off the power, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside the bracket. Inside the bracket is x squared plus 36. So the derivative is 2x plus 0. So it's just 2x. Okay, simplifying this very quickly, the half and the 2 go together to make 1. Um, the power of a negative a half, negative goes on the bottom of a fraction, and the half is a square root. So we have x squared plus 36 as a square root on the bottom of the fraction. That's the power of the negative a half in action. The half and the 2 cancel out, dx is on top, and that right there is our dr on dx. So to finish off, we're going to take our dr on dx, going back to the green. We're going to multiply it by dx on dt, which we said from the question is just equal to 100. So we do our dr on dx times 100, and we get 100x over the square root of x squared plus 36. That right there is our full marks answer for three marks in 2010 band 4 HSC question. Okay, hopefully that gave you some idea of how to approach these questions, how to interpret the, the wording and find your derivatives. Um, if you have a maths in focus textbook, you can try some of these questions to get some more confidence. Um, otherwise, post a question if you have any, and um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned something at least. All right, bye for now.